I am Ashish Kumar Pathak, Assistant Professor, Center for Foreign Languages, English, Central University of Bihar, Gaya. Today, I am going to deliver a short talk on Jack Derrida and Deconstruction. Jack Derrida, French philosopher who sits at the forefront of post-structuralism, is the father of deconstruction. It is significant here to uh, attempt to give a brief definition of deconstruction. In fact, deconstruction is a method of inquiry which asserts that all writings are full of confusion and contradictions and even a writer cannot overcome these contradictions by his deliberate effort to convey meaning. So, uh, this is something about the very property of language that it precludes the possibility of conveying any meaning with in its absolute form. In fact, uh, deconstruction is a critique of structuralism. Derrida accepts the ground of Sachu's linguistics only to dismantle it. Structure, sign and play in the discourse of human sciences is a seminal essay that Derrida delivered in 1968 in John Hopkins University. This essay took the whole western world uh, by storm. In this conference, great thinkers like Foucault, Bardou, Barth were present and they all were taken by surprise by a new world view which Derrida delivered in this lecture. In fact, this lecture critiques the very idea of structure. In any assumed structure, Derrida questions the fixity of center and argues for the free play of center or margin. Derrida also questions the finality of signified. He uh, believes that in language we keep moving from one signifier to other and the ultimate meaning or the supposed signified remains elusive. For example, we can take the word mean. If somebody asks what is the meaning of this word, we say mean means meaning. What is meaning? Meaning means some significance. What is significance? The state of being significant. What is significant? the state of being important. In this way, we keep moving, we see here, from one signifier to another signifier without getting to any definite meaning. In this way, language is constantly in a state of dissemination. Further, Sashur maintained that by virtue of their differences, signs refer to the meaning that exists in the external world. But Derrida maintains that there is nothing outside language and language is self-referential. He wants to say that words do not convey any meaning that exists outside the world of language. There is nothing outside the text. The next word that Derrida coins is difference. In fact, this word is constituted of two English words we can understand differ and defer. One signifier is always different from the other and it keeps postponing the other. No sign is complete in itself. Half of it is something else that is never there. There is always some lack, some incompleteness. So, no entity is a unified whole. Further, in his arguments, Derrida challenges the long tradition of logocentricism and phonocentricism that we find in uh, the Western philosophy. In fact, Derrida demolishes the tradition of logocentricism and phonocentricism. He maintains that, in fact, the word logos stands for God, presence, center, morality, etc. I mean, these concepts have always occupied the central position in all human discourses. So, Derrida challenges the centrality of these concepts and he maintains that there is no God, no center in the universe. He proved that writing is not inferior to speech. Otherwise, it was usually assumed that writing exists there only to complement the speech. So, speech is always at the center. Derrida said that writing can retain its purity during the ages 
while speech is incapable of doing this. Further, Derrida demolishes the difference between metaphor and metaphysics by referring to the analogy of palimpsest propounded by Anatole France. In fact, what is this analogy of palimpsest? Palimpsest is the skin of goat and in the earlier times, uh, cryptic messages were used to be written on the skin of goat. But that message will be visible to the reader only if that skin of goat or palimpsest is kept in front of fire or flame. So, Derrida argues that metaphors are all pervasive in language. Language is an army of metaphors and metonymy, even if uh, the texts of philosophy are not free from those metaphors. Therefore, philosophy cannot lay claim through truth. In fact, Derrida refers to a long battle which has been existing between the philosophers and the writers in the sense that philosophers always claim that philosophy is the only medium to convey the truth or to reach the truth. Truth can be achieved only through philosophy. In fact, this tradition started with Plato only and till so sure philosophers are of the same opinion. But Derrida challenges this view. He says that language is everywhere same, be it a text of philosophy or a text of literature. Therefore, he demolishes the distinction between metaphor and metaphysics and uh, philosophy cannot lay claim to truth. Then he comes to aporia. Aporia means a deadlock of meaning. There is no conclusion. Thesis and antithesis remain opposed to each other without any possibility of synthesis. So, to conclude, we can say that no text has absolute meaning. There is always some possibility of new interpretation. A text is multilayered. Language is eternally metaphorical. And thereby, uh, uh, Derrida also demolishes the distinction between literature and non-literature. Thank you.